Hello and welcome everyone to the Saturday stream of Fantasy Grounds Map and Image Creation. Uh, I'm Josh and I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining me today. I hope everyone is having a great week and uh, everything is going splendidly. Now we're going to be jumping in right into some stuff today as well. Uh, last week we had a couple of people who asked uh, about some more beginner friendly kind of stuff. And so I thought today would be a good, we're, we're still going to be doing uh, some pretty advanced kind of map making stuff, um, but I'm going to be showing you guys and going through and spending a little bit extra time uh, talking about all the different tools and how they are used, or at least some of the ways that we uh, uh, intend to use them. Obviously, the tools are very robust, and so there's lots of different ways that you can kind of implement uh, many of the techniques. And I'm sure that you guys do some things that I probably have never even thought of. So uh, if you guys have any sort of ideas or if there's anything that I do that um, uh, I don't explain uh, completely or if there's something that I do uh, because I do tend to use a lot of shortcuts. Uh, so if there's something that happens and you guys are unsure how it happened, uh, just uh, throw something in the chat and I'm more than happy to stop and explain anything. Um, so I thought today we, we're just going to do a very basic kind of uh, uh, scenario here. And we can add in a lot of different elements uh, and anything that, as I said, if you guys have an idea or if you want to throw something in there, or if you have a question on how to add a particular type of element to the map, throw it into chat and I'm more than happy to expand on that. So I thought what we would do uh, last week, we actually, oh, let, let's, uh, let's pull up some of the uh, maps and all of the maps that we create uh, do get put up for free on the forge. So uh, you guys can look on there. Uh, if you look up under Smiteworks, uh, you'll see all the ones that have been released so far. Uh, and I have a ton more that are going to be going up uh, hopefully this next week. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. I have about 30 or 40 more maps to go up there. Great. So last week we actually did a frozen desert with a little bit of a uh, castle on top. Uh, mixing and matching some uh, rather unlikely kind of uh, duo there of... Uh, of uh, Desert and uh, the Winter uh, art package. And um, yeah, pretty fun. They're super, uh, um, it adds a whole lot of uh, interesting kind of dynamics when you kind of use that juxtaposition of uh, elements that don't often get matched together. And I really enjoy that as well. Uh, we've made some other ones like this in the past. Uh, we made a Hellish Forest a while ago which also does something in, this, in a similar kind of vein. Yeah, let's just uh, open this up here. Where we had this nice little transition from, um, again, a kind of barren wasteland into a more lush uh, forested area. So super fun stuff there. Oh, hello, Svenster. Hopefully you're having a great week as well. You personally use uh, my shading techniques. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, that's a really great um, a kind of topic to bring up is that even if you are using a pre-made campaign or if you have some pre-made maps, you can add on top of those. You can do so much with them. Uh, you can add in any other of the elements that you wish, uh, build right on top of it. Uh, so the flexibility is really there. You can do so much with it. In fact, I will even take handouts and add in a whole bunch of different stuff. I've done some of those in the past as well, where we take handouts and uh, doctor them up and do lots of really cool kind of interesting things with them. Yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we should actually do that again sometime, uh, work on some, some kind of uh, uh, additional things beyond just the map side of things. Uh, because as I said, handouts are a great uh, kind of way to do that. Uh, if I look into, let's see, I might have one here that we could do super fast before we get going here. Or maybe we'll do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. Uh, but we'll build a, a really quick map here from scratch, uh, and then maybe we'll get in. I think I might have a couple of uh, illustrations or something that we could add. Um, oh, here's some things that I did for the uh, House of Lament, uh, the Van Richter's Guide. And we can jump in and, and add some additional elements to those as well. Uh, let's see. If 
but yeah, we'll we'll jump in. We'll we'll do a whole bunch of different stuff. So let's uh let's get going here. We have a, a limited amount of time and uh, a lot to cover. So uh, without further ado, we shall begin. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to go into we're going to create uh, just like a a small structure uh, in a uh, a particular type of environment. So uh, what kind of environment do you guys think we should do? A forest, a uh, seaside. Um, we want to do something that is uh, a little bit uh, on the generic side, I think. Nothing too uh, over the top that requires uh, too much stuff. But um, I was thinking maybe like a forest cottage or... Uh, and that way we could do the interior as well as some of the surrounding uh, environment. You guys have any suggestions? So what I'm going to do is show you first, uh, there are several different ways uh, to actually jump into and start creating your image, right? And you can see that I just did this. I right click uh, and then I created a new uh, element, which is right here at the bottom. So we create that and that's one way to do it, right? So if I close this down, you're going to see that we now have this new image here and I can delete this. Uh, but I can also do it uh, a couple of other ways. We can We can get this kind of rolling here. And I'm going to use the uh, FG 2019 art package. That's a great art pack. And if anyone wants to buy a particular art package who doesn't have the subscription, uh, I would always suggest that one that has a ton of different images in there. And uh, it really has a, a, a lot of stuff that you would need in a lot of... Um, standardized kind of environments. And uh, so... Let's see here, Art Pack 2019. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use these tiles uh, to create my ground right here. And so we can do this a couple of different ways. We'll use, uh, let's use the lighter ground. Um, so I could uh, click on this and then I can create an image record by uh, pressing this button here. Um, or I can just drag this into uh, the images window and that will instantly populate uh, that particular image uh, into uh, my workspace. And I could do the same exact thing by doing it this way as well, uh, by clicking on this particular button. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 100 by 100, not 1,000, but 100 by 100. And then I'm going to drop down the opacity of this um, a little bit so that we can still see it a little bit. I can use it to line up all of my different elements, uh, but it doesn't have any sort of intrusive uh, overlay onto the map itself. And then I'm just going to grab a couple of these other ones. And these are all seamless textures that uh, just blend right together. Uh, so we can just kind of drag and drop these out. Let's grab maybe something like this. And we'll put this one over here. And then uh, we'll just duplicate this one. I'm going to hit Control C and Control V to duplicate that. And now we have our nice little workspace here. We have a little bit of grass, uh, some different types of, uh, of dirt and uh, I chose this one for a little bit more contrast so that you guys can see a little bit better what's going on and how all of these are going to interact. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder. Uh, now that I've created this folder, I can click on this top layer here and then hold shift. And that's going to select all of these when I click on the lowest level one. And then I can drag and drop those right inside the folder. The reason why I do that is a couple of, well, there's a couple of different reasons why. But one, it now works as a conglomerate while it's, I have the folder uh, selected. But I can still come in here and move them individually as well. But if I in interact with this on the folder level uh, here in the Layers tab, uh, I can open up the Color Picker and this will adjust everything inside of that folder. So I can use this as if it was one image instead of four separate images that are uh, stacked in separate layers. And that's a really important and powerful aspect of Fantasy Grounds Unity image creation. So uh, always keep that in mind and you can organize things. You can even put folders inside of folders. And uh, so yes, uh, much like you would expect, but uh, it is a very powerful tool with all the different layers and the way that all of this kind of interacts. Oh, Badlands with a mining camp? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, we probably won't do that this week, uh, but next week for sure. That would be soon. Sounds uh, super fun. 
Uh, we might even want to, uh, yeah, sure. Why don't we add in a couple of uh, water elements as well? And I'm just going to grab this and let's duplicate that. And again, I'm just going to drop this down and we're going to do something like this. So this is going to look a little bit repeating because of the way that the water texture is, but we're going to change that. We're going to add some additional kind of water elements on top of there and do lots of different cool stuff and also create a little coastline here. So I'm going to move back up into here. And so the next thing I'm going to do, uh, well, I think that I'm going to separate these and let's create a new folder. We'll call this one water. And let's call this one uh, ground. And just, just to uh, help keep everything organized, uh, separated, and uh, that way we can interact with them on a, uh, uh, in a little bit separately. So if we decide to change these colors, uh, it won't interfere with our water in any particular way. I'm going to close down my image uh, window. We don't really need that right now. And I'm going to expand this out so that we have a little bit bigger of a workspace here. We can move this right over. And uh, right, we can get right to it. Now, one of the great things uh, that you guys might not be aware of, especially if you're kind of new to this, is that along the bottom here, we have these, these hotkey uh, uh, little areas, right? Now, each one of these uh, can be used in the gaming session, but it can also be used during the uh, image creation as well. And I actually drag and drop images down here that I'm going to be using a lot in my uh, image creation. So let's say, for example, if I go into my decorations, and over here we're going to see that uh, there are these grass elements. So to separate this out, I'm just going to type in grass, and here we have a couple of different grass types, right? I can grab these, and I can drop these right down into here. Uh, so if I need to use these, uh, I can just grab them without having to search for them anymore. And then I can clear out that search. Uh, we can move right up into the, uh, the uh, main decorations area here, and we don't have to worry about that. So now I'm going to create a new painting layer, and uh, we're going to call this one grass. And I'm going to switch over into the painting uh, tab. You can see that we have several different tabs, and as we switch through these, uh, it offers up a completely new set of tools uh, that we can use to create our images, uh, as well as all the functionality of our lighting and line of sight systems. Our grids and everything. So the, the tools that we have here are very, very robust, um, all the way from many different types of uh, elements in our grid system, as well as we can change all the size, our distance parameters. Uh, there's just a ton. We can add in... Uh, FX layers, and we're going to be doing a lot of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the uh, stamp tool, and I'm going to grab uh, one of these decorations. Let's start off with one of the larger ones here. And I'm just going to drop that right in there. And as you can see here, well, I don't, didn't mean to click right there. Uh, what that does is it loads up the image uh, right onto uh, the... Uh, the little quill brush or the uh, the reticule that we use for the um, the cursor, where the mouse location is, and this is going to give us a preview of exactly what we're going to stamp if we start to stamp this around. Uh, I can change the size of this by holding down Control and using my mouse wheel, and I can hold down Shift and change its orientation. I can also interact with the uh, tint, the uh, color picker, uh, by holding down R, G, or B, or or A. Uh, and also using the mouse wheel as well. Make sure I have that selected. And now you can see I can make it uh, more or less opaque by holding down A and using the mouse wheel. I can remove uh, all of the red. Um, I can also do the same with the green and the blue channel as well. So I can hold them all down and interact with them all at the same time. Uh, but this is, this is something that is very useful uh, and uh, saves us a whole lot of time as we interact with the whole entire system here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to lower down my opacity here a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp out uh, some elements here um, as I add in some additional kind of grass features here. And let's lower down that a little bit more. And I'm going to... Sh sh I, what I oftentimes will do is change the size and the rotation so that you don't get too much of this repeating textural patterns. Uh, it'll break that up for you uh, a lot. And we can kind of create our own little system down here, as you can see here. Now let me just lower down that opacity, and then we're going to rotate this. 
And you can see we can start to interact with the system and paint this. And we can hit, do Control Z and remove anything that we just put. And we can also grab our eraser and we can remove them this way as well. I'm going to switch back over here and I'm just going to paint out a little bit of extra stuff uh, along this way. We can do the same thing with the ground. Uh, we can kind of build this back and forth. And so I can uh, lower this down. And as you can see here, we can rotate this, change its size. And so on and so forth. Now let me grab one of these other. I'll actually grab this and drag this down here too, just in case I need to grab that later on in addition. But we'll grab some of these other uh, kind of grass elements. And again, I'm going to lower down the opacity and just kind of paint this out. We're going to create some, uh, some interesting little uh, areas here. And maybe we'll build our little cottage over here and do like a little uh, lakeside thing, maybe build a little dock and whatnot. Now we can use, I'm going to use some of these uh, conglomerates over here uh, to build this area up very, rather quickly. Before I get going too far, uh, let's take care of this and let's, let's build us a little bit of a coastline here. Let's move up into our brushes. And you're going to see here we have some that are already set up uh, to do this right in through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these. I'm going to drag this over here. I'm actually going to create a new painting layer. I'm going to drop this down into my water. And I want this to be on top so it's above all of these other water elements. And I'm going to switch over to my line tool. Now what the line tool does is it allows me to uh, draw out this image. We have uh, any sort of brush that we create uh, is specifically designed to work with the line, the rectangle, and the ellipse tool. And these are all seamless in a horizontal, I mean in a vertical position, not horizontal, but vertical. And let me just move over here really quickly so you can kind of I can demonstrate this. So what I can do is I can pull this out, for example, as you can see, and it's going to just draw out a line of this image. So let me uh, let's just do this. And as you can see here, uh, we, it'll, it will create this kind of seamless uh, extension of the image. Now I can also hold down the mouse button and I can draw this out and create any shape that I wish. And I can also click out and it will pull out in a straight line and then I can move around corners and do all of the uh, fanciness that we would like to see um, with the way that the uh, coastline might uh, interact with the, uh, any sort of scenario that we can come up with. Uh, another thing that we can do is when we're drawing this out, uh, we can hold down um, uh, control and it's going to snap to our grid. But I can actually make sure that I uh, adhere to particular types of dimensions. Uh, and I can even come back after the fact and go into my Layers tab. And we can readjust the size of these uh, as well. Uh, let's see, we have a, as you stamp those uh, parts that overlay each other, get more color, brighter than darker, it seems. Right, so what it does is it becomes just more and more opaque. It's not going to get darker uh, because there's no such, there's no um, um, interaction of the system that would be like a multiply or a darkening kind of layer. Uh, what this will actually do is I can stamp this out until it's a completely opaque image. Uh, so it will never be darker than the image will be in its completely full opaque form. But that's a, that's a good or, or, uh, observation, Randy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here. Uh, let's go back into our tab over here. I'm just going to delete this uh, layer. And we'll create a new one. And we'll just drop this right in here, uh, right where we want it to be. And then make sure that we can, you can switch between uh, the image paint and a traditional kind of paint tool. And I do use both of these quite a lot. So uh, make sure that you are uh, aware that there is the ability to do in between there. As well. So what I'm going to actually do is uh, I can hold down control and that's going to snap right there. And you can see that this is kind of going in the wrong direction. Uh, we want our coastline to be in the other way. So I can either do this, I can bring it down from the bottom to the top, or I can just flip it. And now it will be exactly what I want. And now I could either 
uh, just bring this straight across if I want a very flat uh, kind of um, straight across uh, element there. Uh, but I don't really want that. So I'm going to hold down. Uh, I'm not going to hold down anything. I'm just going to, well, actually, let's let's pull this out so that we have a nice flat kind of edge there. So I'll pull this out a couple of squares here. And I'll click, and you can see that that's going to line that up perfectly because I was holding control when I started there. And, and then I'm just going to click around, and I'm just going to add in a little bit of variety here uh, to the shape. And then I'll hold down uh, control, and we will just end it in exactly the same way. Boom. You can see that we're going to have a little bit of a, a, of a distance, not of a distance, but a little bit of a transitional change, and we're going to fix that. So that's no problem whatsoever. But we've instantly created a nice little coastline. And we're going to doctor this up in lots of different ways. Oh, we have, uh, uh, so uh, Big Bad 2000 says, uh, is it possible to maybe include a river with some rapids or a small waterfall? Uh, certainly, we can, we can add in a river to this, no problem at all. And we can do that, uh, we can do that right now, in fact. And we can do that a couple of different ways in addition, right? I wonder if I have, let's see here. Let's just type in water and see what we have available. Yeah, we have all of these elements here. So yeah. Yeah, you bet. And I'll actually do it with this, uh, this br brush in particular. So what I'm going to actually do, if we're going to add in a river, for example, uh, let's just, I'm going to control Z this all the way back to the beginning here. And then I'm going to use this to create my uh, river in. So what I'll do is I'm just going to build this down uh, in the same kind of fashion as I was before. And then let's say we want to do like a little river coming off this way. And I'm going to have to change the orientation. We're going to put the grass a little bit lower so it doesn't interfere. And then again, I'm going to pull this over. Uh, we'll do something like this. And then I'm just going to go back uh, in the same direction here. Creating my river. And that's a little bit off at the bottom, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. And we're going to drag this down. Uh, and we're going to we want to put this right into our ground layer as well. Boom. And we can add in all kinds of different rapids and uh, water elements. We'll, we'll do that as well. You can see how easy that is. So what I'm actually going to do in this next section is I'm going to grab this one, which is just uh, this kind of like water texture. I'm going to hold down A, and I'm going to lower down my opacity. I want this to be uh, a bit um, um, transparent here. And back in my uh, water element here, I am just going to do a couple passes of it along here. And then I'm going to lower down my opacity again. And this is just going to help do a little bit of the transition for me. Uh, as we're going to come in, we're going to add in uh, lots of different wave elements and splashes and rocks and things along here. Uh, but this is just going to be a little bit of an uh, easy way for me to do the transition uh, without having to stamp out too, too much stuff. Perfect. Now, if we go into, and we have, uh, there's other water art packs as well, but these are all things that are just contained in the 2019 art. Going into our decorations, uh, we can type in rock. And we actually have uh, some, some of these little rock elements. So now let's switch over to our stamp tool, as you can see here. And I'm actually going to use this uh, to help uh, create some of this stuff along here. So let's, let's grab these.
And you can see we've already started to develop uh, a little bit of exactly what we were trying to create here. And I'm going to grab some of these other rocks as well. And we're going to add in uh, some other little additional kind of elements here. And I will show you guys how you can uh, kind of bring this all together. Getting off on a little bit of a sidetrack here with the water, but that's okay. And we even have some nice little elements that we can do uh, right on the side here. Uh, something like this. Kind of break up uh, some of this transitions. And we can come back in and add in some grass coming off of here and more rocks and do all, all kinds of sorts of I'm just going to come back up into the uh, my decorations here. Actually, let's go into the effects. This is where, uh, no, that's for uh, those ones. So I'm going to go into, uh, I believe we have a nice, no, we don't want that. We want, uh, So many art packages now, guys. We want coastlines, I believe. I believe so. That's what we're going to be using next. I think that this is not the one that I was thinking about. This this will work. Where are my other uh, coast? Hold on one second while I just uh, check this really quickly. It looks like I don't have uh, two of the art packages loaded. Let's see here. If not, I'll just uh, grab them and throw them in here really quickly and so that we can get rolling. Nope, I don't see it. So let me just grab those. Uh, should have uh, coastlines, coastlines two. Do you guys have any good games going on this uh, weekend or this week in general? Ooh, Savage Worlds pirate game. That sounds fun.
All right, I got that all loaded up. I'm just going to uh, have to restart Fancy Grounds here really quickly so that we can have access to those. And then we'll get this up and running once again. So hold on one second here. I jump back and forth between uh, test channel and uh, some additional iterations of Fantasy Ground so that it's hard for me to keep track of what's, uh, what's where and when and how. Oh, Conan. How is the Conan system? I, I've heard a lot of people who really enjoy it. Oh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Boy, I haven't. Uh, that was that was a fun one back in the day. All righty. Now let's open this back up. And now when we go into our assets, we should have, here we have the coastal, uh, we are. And again, we have a whole bunch of different brushes and a completely different set of, uh, of, uh, water type images, but we're going to be using these. We might, we might build a little bit. Uh, what I actually want to do is, uh, as you can see here, we have lots of things. And in these particular art packages, there's things to create your own boats and, and all kinds of stuff. But uh, what I actually want is this water splash right here. And I did all of that just for that, mostly. So let's jump over here and I'm going to grab this. And with this, uh, I'm going to start to create some uh, nice little elements along here. So what I'm going to show you, uh, and this is something that you can do often and use um, a lot. And I use this a lot as well. It is this technique where we can uh, elongate uh, images or change its shape. Uh, so it, by default, you're going to have the aspect lock ratio on, and you can turn this off. And what that means is, is we can now interact with the size of the width and the height uh, differently. If this is on, right, and I change the size of this to one, it will keep it uh, exactly the way that it was intended, right? Uh, there's no distortion in the width to the height ratio. But if I change this, uh, now what I can do is I can create this image uh, to be a little bit elongated, right? And still maintain some of that uh, same type of image quality. So what I'm actually going to do, so maybe we'll make that like that, and we'll make this something along these lines. And I'm going to use this to kind of uh, create a, a lot of the shapes that I'm going to do along here. And I'm going to do that by lowering down my opacity. And I'm going to click on this painting layer. And what I can do is I can now begin to stamp this around in this kind of fashion, right? Where we're going to create these little uh, bits of, of waves. I'm actually going to do that in the other direction. Here. So let's uh, flip it this way. And I'm going to lower down my opacity a bit more. And I'm just going to put in uh, some uh, little bit of elements here that are what I'm going to use as my base. And then I'm going to come in and add in some, some smaller kind of elements here. And I can even kind of do this uh, along through here where I want areas that are going to be a little bit uh, more rapid -y. We're going to have a little bit more of that froth that kind of builds up. And now I can reset this. Lower down my opacity here a little bit. And if I make this uh, a little bit less uh, in my opacity here and smaller, I can now begin to build out uh, some of these elements and have a little bit more control over it. And I'm going to build this up. I'm going to put some up over the rocks here a little. And this is where it's kind of like painting with images. We're going to add in a lot of little
And we will accentuate this a little bit more in a moment when we start to do all of our shadows and whatnot. Nice. Now let's add in a little bit along this line. And I don't want to be too uh, precise with this, right? I want it to look kind of like splashy, uh, kind of up over some of this stuff. We're just going to place it here and in there. Lowering down the opacity at times, changing its size and rotation. kind of making it feel like it's alive and there are things going on there. I'm going to grab one of these grass uh, elements. And I'm going to move back down into here. And I'm going to build out some of this grass along some of these edges here. And we can build up all kinds of rocks and do uh, lots of fun little stuff here. Great. Now we have our entire background already done. We're going to add in lots of other elements here, uh, but we're going to expedite this a little bit here. And let's jump over into our uh, 2019 art package. And I'm going to go back into these decorations, and I'm just going to grab some of these conglomerates here, some of these uh, pre-built uh, elements. Now we could just grab and drop these right out, uh, something like this, if we wanted to. Um, or we can paint it out as well. But I'm just going to drag and drop a couple of these out, uh, and we can, um, we can start to build up from there. We can move over. I'm just actually going to grab in. There's a, there's a few of these uh, that are just all pre-built. Uh, they have shadows all uh, built right into them. And uh, we can just kind of uh, grab these and, and drop them around. We could even do it uh, with some of these tree elements and so on and so forth. We could even grab uh, maybe one of these bridges or something in there, uh, if we so wish. But we're going to build our nice little uh, cabin here. Maybe we'll just move this over to the side. Maybe we'll make this into a little road uh, coming down this way. We'll give ourselves enough space to kind of build this out. Uh, before we go too much further, let's grab an effects layer. And I'm going to drop this effects layer. Uh, we want it to be above our water, but we can have it below anything else. So that anything that we build on top of it, we don't have to worry about too much. And we can go into our effects layer, and I'm just going to make this into a water layer. You can see we get this uh, nice little like ripply kind of effect. And I'm going to add a mask to it by clicking on the Enable Mask button. And you can see nothing is now shown. Uh, but what I can actually do at this point is uh, drag out the shape of my water here. Now I'm holding down control uh, so that I can draw out any shape that I wish. Now I'm going to hold down shift and control and I'm going to remove the rocks from it. We don't want our rocks to be uh... and I'm going to blur out the edge here a little bit. We can come back in here. We want to give a little bit of birth uh, for our um, coastline here. And now I'm going to come into these, uh, these elements, and we can start to uh, adjust these parameters. So we could increase the droplet more if we wanted to. But I'm going to bring it down a little bit, lower down the speed here a little. and make it a little bit more subtle than that. Great. Now we're going to move over into, let's grab, let's go into the, uh, the interior art package too. And we're going to start to build out our actual structure itself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, structure. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these floor elements. I'm going to, I'm going to build out uh, the base elements or the uh, the uh, 
the base kind of footprint that the uh, the structure is going to have. Um, and I'll just grab one of these. Uh, let, should we do a stone floor or should we do a wooden floor? What do you guys think? I suppose uh, wood would probably make a little bit more sense. Oh yeah, we could do. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do wood with maybe like a stone foundation around it. Sounds good. Now uh, I can either create a painting layer, but I don't have to uh, with this uh, selected. Uh, and the painting tool selected here. And we can do this a couple of different ways. These are all set up uh, to be seamless textures as well. Uh, but I'm going to stamp this out. So I'm just going to do, uh, nope, I want to stamp it out. I'm holding down control so it stays right inside of all of this stuff here. And I'm not worried about it uh, overshadowing here right now, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come back in and I can move all of this uh, independently. So we have a whole bunch of different other elements in here. So that's our our footprint of our floor. This is where our, our building is going to be. I'm going to create a new painting layer and I'm going to drop it down in underneath. Uh, and this is going to be our foundation. And I want this to kind of uh, poke out a little bit. So what I'm actually going to type in down here is stone wall. And this is going to bring up all of the different stone walls. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a brush at the end of it. So this is going to be all of the brushes that are labeled as a stone wall. So maybe we'll take something like this, which is kind of like field stones, um, or let's see what we got here that might, uh, maybe we'll do something like this a little bit rougher. So I can come over here and I can drag and drop this right in here like this. And I'm going to actually grab my rectangle tool. Or maybe we'll grab this one. This one looks, oh, that's the one that I have. Yeah, I think this one will work great. And I'm going to click right up here on the top corner here, and I'm just going to drag this out. Now it's going to show it on top, but when I let go of this, as you can see, it's going to go right in underneath. And I'm not going to worry about it not being lined up right now, right now because I can come back in here, and I can hold down Control, and then I have total ability uh, to kind of manipulate this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make it a little bit bigger, even. I'm going to grab this little widget, and we will make this a little bit wider. And maybe even a little bit longer this way. And line that right up, something like this. So now we have our foundation, and I'll rename this one to Floor. And we can grab these and we can drop these right inside of our structure uh, folder. Let's move this on top so that we can interact with that a little bit easier. And I'm actually going to move this underneath uh, all of these other elements. I want to have trees and whatnot that kind of go over the top. So now we can start to build all of our different walls and whatnot. So if we go back into the um, interior map pack, to so our brushes here. We have a whole bunch of different uh, wooden and other types of walls here. And I'm actually going to paint this right on top of the floor element, I believe. Well, no, let's, let's, create a, let's, let's actually create a new one. And we'll put this in here as well. Uh, and we'll call this one walls. And I'm going to separate this just so that I can um, erase out sections of the wall and whatnot. Make sure that we're in our painting tab here. And again, what I can do is uh, grab this rectangle brush and I'm going to just come inside here a little bit and I'm actually going to uh, darken this up a little bit so that we have some good separation between 
Actually, let's do it with the with our, our keyboard shortcuts here. I'm going to hold down R, G, and B. Uh, make sure that I have this selected, and then I'm going to uh, just darken this up a little bit. And I might even add it. Uh, let's increase the red a little uh, and the green a little bit so it, it has a little bit of color variation to it. And again, I can... Uh, I don't have to worry too much about how this is going to interact because I can come back in here and I can make all of these adjustments that I want to. And now I can come back in here and make sure I have my image paint tool selected and maybe we'll add in uh, a little element across here. Let's let's divide, let's let's create a, like a little bedroom or something. Perfect. Now I'll grab my eraser tool. And I'm actually, for this, I'm going to uh, increase the opacity of my grid. So I can kind of line this up. Uh, and what I'll do is let's, let's, let's remove um, about this much of our wall. And we'll do a front door maybe on this side. Great. So let's go into our floor tab now, and now we can switch back over to our layers tab. Uh, and now we can adjust the colors of this. Maybe we'll make it a little bit brown. Something like this. And I can further adjust these wall uh, colors as well. So we can bring this uh, a bit darker as well. And once we add in all of our shadows and whatnot, we'll have some pretty good separation between the two. Now I'm going to switch back over and I'm going to drop down the opacity of grid again. And we can begin to build the entire interior of this structure as well. So I'm going to type in a door, for example. Let's grab let's let's grab some of these ones that are a little bit more um well let's let's actually go in let's let's build up uh, a couple of uh, elements here We'll create um I'm going to make sure my aspect lock ratio is off I want this to be about 5 Maybe something like this. I'm actually going to create uh, some little like door jams here. I'm going to go down to the floor area. And I'm going to build um, a little bit on the bottom here. You might want to make that a little bit wider than the other elements here. Now I can grab a door. And let's make this just about 41, 1. And we'll make this into like a little bit of a, a double. And I'm actually going to put this on the floor level. I want this to be kind of sticking out from underneath. So we'll do something like that.
I think that's a little bit light, wider here. That's a little bit uh, wonky. Let's let's fix that a little bit while we're doing this. Great, that looks a little bit better. And maybe we'll just leave this one open. We can build a little bedroom in here and whatnot. Now all this is going to look pretty rough at the moment until we get some of our shadows going and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but before we do that, let's just create a one more painting layer. Drop this in here and we'll call this uh, roof. And we have a nice little brush for this as well. And let's see, this is... Probably going to want it to be like here or wide. We want it to be like And again, I'm not going to worry too much about it lining up perfectly right now. I'm going to move it after the fact. I just want to make sure it's about the right uh, size here. Perfect. And I'm going to overhang that peak uh, just a little bit there. And now we can jump over into our Layers tab, and we can change this to whatever color we wish. Now the great thing about having this on separate layers like this is now I can hide this when players go inside. Great, so now let's add in a couple of other elements here. Let's go into the 2019 art package. Uh, we'll finish up our environment. And then we'll jump in and add in all of our uh, shadows and highlights. I think we just want to type in tree. Let's do a nice, right big, a nice giant tree right around here. Oh, we'll have to put in like a um, a chimney as well and whatnot. And we can add in all kinds of different bushes and so on and so forth. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create one more uh, effects layer. And we're going to call this one uh, our shadows. We're going to use an adjust layers, uh, adjust colors layer. I'm going to drop down uh, my brightness here. And I'm going to drop down the green and the red value, so it's a little bit on the blue side. We're going to create that mask. And begin to paint out our shadows here. I'm going to add in a little bit extra from these. And we can start to add in some here as well, and then we can blur this right out. We might not need that extra in these ones. We'll, we'll paint those in so it's not so uh, not so intrusive.
And I'm going to do a little bit uh, in through here. And we'll do some a little incidental shadows as well. Let's see if I can spell today. We'll grab a chimney. We'll grab this one. Uh, we'll just do a straight up and down one. And I think we'll put it, uh, let's just put it to the side here a little bit of the piece. Actually, yeah, let's do it there. And then we can come back into our effects layer. And obviously this side of this is not going to have any sort of. We can fix some of that shadow and we can add in a little bit of additional shadow on that. Great. Now when we hide this, uh, what we'll be able to do is see the entire inside. Uh, does, does anyone have any questions so far as we move through this? Is there anything that I've done that... Uh, All right, well, let's uh, let's keep going here. Now, we can do the same exact thing with the uh, just colors, uh, but we can do it from the other side as well. So we can create a new, not a painting layer, a new effects layer. And we can do the adjust colors in addition to that. But instead, we can bring it to the uh, brighter area. And we can add in green and red to it, which will make it a little bit yellow. And then we can add in our uh, mask here. And so if we wanted to do... Um, some highlights along these areas here. Again, we can blur this out. And that's a little bit too strong. So let's bring this down something like uh, maybe even And we can do some nice little patches of, uh, and we can do the same uh, in our water here. Add some little subtleties along the edge. Yeah, we could put in a water wheel. We have all kinds of underwater assets. So we have these water wheels and we have these water wheels. Uh, so we can totally build uh, if we wanted to make this into a little element. But let's get into the inside here uh, for the moment. So as it stands right now, these are going to affect the inside.
So let's turn these off for a moment, and uh, maybe we'll just paint in the shadows depending on uh, the elements that we want to kind of add into. Depends on how you're going to be uh, handling it and, and the uh, ways you're going to be actually dealing with it. But let's do some of our interior stuff here. So we'll grab a bed. And I'm going to create a new painting layer. I'm going to drop this between uh, the something like this. And we'll grab a fire stick. Maybe we'll do a stove. No, let's do a fireplace. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to line this up. Now, let's actually just lower down the opacity of this uh, for a moment so that I can line it up uh, correctly. And I'm actually going to put this uh, above not the roof, but the walls. And you know what else I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit more narrow, uh, like this. And make sure I have my stamp tool selected. And now when we come back into the uh, roof area over here, And now when we hide it, we have that lines up pretty well there. Now let's let's add in some rugs. Not And we'll put something in maybe like here. Uh, let's remove those, shall we? And this is why the uh, search feature is so great, because we can just kind of go through all of the different elements that we might have. Before I put the, um, oh yeah, let's do this. We'll, we'll put this on this layer. Do like a nice little table here, and then we'll do chairs. And... and we'll just grab like a nice uh, kind of traditional wooden chair here. Oh, we'll put one on this side. Oh yeah, we can add a window. And we can add in, uh, let's grab some cups maybe. And now we can go right on to uh, this area here. And we can begin to start to populate this with some items. We'll have one that's, that's knocked over. We'll grab some of these dishes.
I'll grab a picture. And we can add in all the different elements that you might. Let's put a book on the bed, shall we? Well, maybe we'll do it closed. Let's do a little stack of books. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint in uh, my shadows. So we showed you, I showed you how you can do it with the effects layers. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is with these effects layers, uh, I'm going to come in here and let's remove the ones uh, that deal or interfere with the, um, with the house, uh, the building here. So I'm just going to go to uh, hide area and we'll just do this. And now I'm going to come in here and uh, we can, we'll paint uh, our own shadows back on there. But we're going to go on the inside here and right on this layer here, uh, we can do a couple of different things. Let's do it on the uh, floor first. And uh, that'll just going to paint out uh, a little bit of ambient shadow. Let's, let's grab the uh, shadow brush here. And let's make sure that we're in our painting area over here. And I'm going to lower down its opacity. And that's just going to create a nice little ambient kind of shadow that's coming out from underneath all of these things. And then I'm actually going to grab uh, this, this guy. And I'm going to hold down R, G, and B, and I'm going to bring it all the way down to black. And then I'm going to hold down B and just bring in so a little bit of blue in there. Let's drop down our opacity here quite a lot and switch over uh, to the stamp tool. And now I'm going to uh, actually stamp out. And let's make sure that we are on this particular layer here right now. And I'm just going to stamp out some little shadows from this stuff. Now, this is not something that you necessarily have to do by any stretch of the imagination, but I like to do these kinds of things because it just adds a little bit more uh, believability. And we can come back down into our floor and we can start to paint out from underneath some of these elements as well. And I'm going to do a little bit extra in these uh, corners. Uh, we get a little bit of that ambient occlusion. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can certainly do that as well. And so Spencer says making a copy of the object to make a shadow uh, is a great trick. And that is absolutely true. I will demonstrate that in just a moment. But you can see just by adding that little bit of shadow in there, uh, we have drastically increased uh, the believability of the interior here. Now, one of the great things about the way that this has been created is because we used these, uh, the line, rectangle, and ellipse tool uh, to do our walls, which means that we can switch over to the line of sight and we can use this uh, to generate all of that line of sight instantly for us. And I'm just going to pull this in uh, so that This matches up. And then we can add in our little window down here. So let's put our roof back on. And now I'm just going to go back in and go into my roof layer. And I'm just going to add in 
a little bit of shadow on this side here. Let's go a little bit larger in these shapes. And now that it's on the roof layer, uh, when we hide the roof, uh, it won't interfere with what is underneath. And so uh, what uh, Spencer was saying before, uh, like, for example, in this tree layer, we have a single tree. And if we just duplicate this, we can create a new copy of this tree. Uh, we can go into our Layers tab, and we could drop this all the way down to black or nearly black, and also lower down uh, the opacity of it. Drop this underneath the tree, and then move this out for a perfect little drop shadow. And now we can add in one more effects layer, not a painting layer, an effects layer. And let's add this one as uh, clouds. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this into smoke coming out of. So let's make a mask here and let's draw out our smoke. Let's blur that out a little. And let's increase our clouds, uh, slow down the speed here a bit. change our offset here a little. Now we have a little bit of smoke coming out of our chimney as well. Great, so uh, look at how, how easy it is to create these maps and how fun it is. I mean, this is a very short amount of time and we've created a very functional uh, map uh, with very little uh, bit of work here. I'm going to actually do, I'm going to create another layer here. And we'll switch back over into the painting area here. And I'm just going to do, uh, with the stamp tool, I'm going to do a little bit of darkness out into the deeper water. So as water gets deeper, or I could also do this with, um, here, I'll show you a couple of different ways. We can also do this with another effects layer. And we can do this with another adjust colors, and we can bring down the darkness again. So as water gets darker, uh, I mean, as water gets deeper, it will get darker. We could actually increase the blue on that a little. Probably do this with, uh, bring this down to something like 42. I probably do this with a couple of different layers. Let's let's actually do that. Whoops. Caps lock is not shift. We can pull this in like this. And we're going to put this down below our uh, all of this other stuff. We don't want our element there to uh, I'm just going to make this a little bit more random. Let's 
And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this. And we're going to drop this down. We'll make this much more subtle or increase this. Let's 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 increase this to 48 across. Well, that's interesting, huh? Make that a little bit darker. And then I'll make this one a little bit. Uh, so we have a little bit more of a subtlety as it gets into these darker uh, or deeper areas here. Oh yeah, the red algae tide. Yeah, we got red tide, guys. And then I'm also going to actually, you know what? We can just add. Let's grab a vignette. Which these are always great to uh, to use for. Uh, what's the what's the width of this? Minus, I think it is thirty. Twenty. Yeah, that's perfect. And now when we come in here, we go into our structure. Uh, we can just hide that roof and look. We have a perfect little representation there. Excellent. Well, we are now at 4.30. I usually take a break at about 4.30, so uh, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to heat up my coffee and uh, grab a glass of water. Uh, I'll just be a moment, then we come back. We're going to go through some other stuff. We're going to grab, actually, some handouts, and um, we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys how you can talk to those up as well. So if you guys want to just hang out for a moment, I will be right back. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining me this afternoon, and... Uh, Stay tuned. We're going to have a lot more stuff coming your way.
All right, we're back. Thanks everybody for hanging out there for a moment. Uh, so we just finished up this map. Uh, we added all kinds of cool stuff to it and uh, basically went through all of the basic kind of building features. We didn't do any of the lighting or anything along those lines, but we can jump into some of that in, in this as well. So uh, let's see. Um, I think I have, oh yeah, let's grab this. Um, so here is a uh, Krampus illustration that I did. And so I'm just going to click this button. It's going to create a... Um, Uh, image record of this right away. We can close that down. We're not even going to need that anymore. Uh, well, we might, uh, but if we do, we'll just uh, open it up once again. So here we have this nice little Krampus. Uh, it's got uh, some different elements in here. So let's say we want to uh, we want to add that up. Well, actually, yeah. Let's let's grab this. And we're going to add in some additional kind of elements. So this is how you can kind of dress up these uh, and create a lot of dynamic uh, interaction with these. Uh, that you wouldn't normally have just from a static kind of image, right? So we have this like snowy kind of scene. So the first thing that we can certainly do is uh, add in an effects layer and let's add in uh, snow, right? So we have this snow coming down or we could actually add in blizzard might be working a little bit more. Well, the speed there is a little, pretty high. So let's turn that down a bit. And let's move this. this down the uh, size of it here a little bit. And we can drop down the amount a little. Well, actually, let's just do, uh, let's do snow. It will be a little bit easier for us to kind of see what's going on here. And we can drop down the size of that and increase our intensity here a bit. So here we have snow. We've instantly kind of added in a particular type of element to this. Um, but let's do this. Let's actually, and I'm going to do this in a couple of different layers here. So let's create a duplicate of this. And you can see it's just exactly the same thing on top. But if I change the size of this, now we have this multi-layer kind of effect here. And perhaps uh, one of them, we don't want to necessarily have it too uh, intrusive on our particular element, so we can add in a mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the mask to be everywhere at first. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to remove it by holding down shift for all of these areas that are a little bit more important for us to see. And maybe we're going to slow this one down. And I'm actually going to be using, and let's uh, let's grab uh, some additional kind of elements in here. We can actually use uh, lighting in this system as well, which can be super fun. So let's switch over uh, to our lighting tab here. And actually, let's turn on, we're going to enable all of this stuff. So this is what our players would see um, as it would stand right now, right? We can't see too much. So we're going to switch over and we're going to grab a light. And let's just add in a light to the uh, scenario here. And I'm going to increase the uh, the I'm going to increase the size of this light, and I'm actually going to increase the uh, fall off as well. We want to make this uh, to be a little bit smoother of a transition here. And now let's increase this. Uh, let's do like ten for this. Maybe just something along these lines. And I'm actually going to. Over here, let's add in uh, we'll get it from uh, being outside there as well. And again, I think what I'll do is just keep it a little bit free so that we have you, you're able to uh, mask out particular elements. You can see we've already started to add in uh, some really cool kind of stuff here. And I think what I'll do is I'll add in uh, another light source, maybe down here. 
And I'm actually, this one, I'm going to set the, uh, oh, no, I want to be, I want to select it. I'm going to set this one uh, to zero. So this is just kind of this ambient light source. And I'm going to change its color. And now what I'm going to do, let's, let's actually slow down some of the snow a little bit. I've got a little bit of a softer kind of falling here. We can switch back and forth. This is just, I, I have so much fun doing this kind of stuff. So let's see here. Yeah, let's, let's drop this down to something like 48. And this one down to something like uh, 22. And we could leave it just like this, right? We could, we could, uh, we could add in some additional kind of elements as well. I think what we'll do is let's let's warm up uh, this light a little bit so we can. Uh, And I might even duplicate this one. Bring down that opacity a little bit. Yeah, cool, right? So let's uh, let's let's check it out. Uh, if I were to let's create a, a folder. And we can switch over. This would be uh what it would traditionally kind of look like as it was before, a very static kind of image. And then this will be what it's like uh, with some very small amount of touches and uh, what, a, what a drastic kind of uh, effect that we can create there with a very little amount of effort. Well, let's, let's grab another one. Let's do something that's going to be a little bit more complex and we can have some fun with it. I have... Um, See what I got here we can grab here. I'll grab another image. Do you guys ever doctor up your uh, handouts in a similar fashion? <laughs> that awesome, Steve. Oh, here's an image that I created uh, here. Let's see if we can find something that's going to work uh, really well here for demonstrating some of this stuff.
Oh, I got a, I got a couple of good ones here for you. Yeah, so this is also really great if you're if you are the type of um, DM that doesn't use maps and you do more theory of the mind, uh, really adding in a particular type of element to it. But uh, so let's go into I think uh, let's go. So here is an element. Uh, yeah, let's let's grab something like this. This is something that we can we can actually do all kinds of cool stuff with. So here we have uh, this kind of environment, right? Where we have lots of different stuff in here. Uh, in this static image, we have lighting, we have um, all kinds of different stuff that we can kind of interact with in many, many different ways. Uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, add in a couple of effects layers. You can see we have like mist down through here, right? So let's, uh, let's add in an effect layer. And maybe we'll do something like clouds. Right, scrolling across the screen. I'm going to lower this down to something like uh, a little bit less intrusive, and we're going to slower the speed down to something that's very slow and subtle, like this. And then again, we're going to add a mask to it, uh, and we're going to start to mask out uh, uh, some of these uh, elements here. So, what I can do is uh, I will re enable it for the entire image here. But then I'm going to switch over to hide area, and I'm just going to start to hide out uh, all of these, not exactly what I wanted to do. Hold on, let's, let's fix that. I'm going to go the other direction with it. And what I can do is I can blur out some of these edges, right? So it's not so uh, intrusive here. Bringing back out some of these details, I think what we'll do is uh, let's add in a little bit. I think we'll, we'll Now we have this nice kind of subtlety coming across here. Let's let's get rid of it over here. We're going to do a lot with lighting and all kinds of stuff here. Let's create a new effects layer. Uh, this one we're actually going to do it as uh, ocean. And now what I'm going to do again is create a mask layer. And we're going to put it in here. And we're going to move back our distortion here a bit. We get this like rippling kind of energy. Again, we can blur out those edges. And we can duplicate that and it will duplicate the mask with it. We don't want to create a new one. We want to duplicate it. And then we can change this to something along the lines of I'm actually going to use snow here. And I'm going to bring the speed all the way down to zero. Increase the intensity here a little bit. And then we're going to get this kind of subtle and find what is going to work really well for this.
Yeah, that's cool. Great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to add in some other like lighting elements and whatnot. So this is where it's going to start to get really cool. So now let's add in. Um, and to do this, we're going to enable all of these things so that we can actually kind of see how, what we're doing here. And let's grab a light. And I'm just going to drop in the light at first, something like this. And I'm going to match this up uh, to the uh, kind of colors that we want to have over in this area. Except I'm going to uh, increase some of this stuff a little bit, like this. Let's turn off these um, clouds for a moment. Because we're going to need to readjust that with the lighting system in a moment. But here we can, uh, we can add this in. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to switch over into the occluders here. And I'm going to create And we're going to add in some uh, additional kind of light sources and stuff. So we're going to do this. And you know what? We should probably do this in all actuality here. Let's, let's, uh, let's change this uh, type here. We want to, let's do it with um, shadow casters. Or no, you know what we should do it with is uh, terrain, I think. Mm, no, let's not do it with terrain because it's going to be in. Oh, it's going to be encased here. Let's do it with. Um, yeah, let's try it with shadow caster. Let me think about this. What would be working the best here? Yeah, I guess just wall. We can just do it with wall. I'll show you guys how you can you can kind of manipulate this. I think I was on the right path. I just second guessed myself. Yeah, like this. And then if we switch back over here, what I'm actually going to do is uh, bring this in a little, like this. And what we want to do is we want to add in some ambient kind of lights here. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll just make this white. We'll adjust that later. Let's get there. Let's get our uh, our elements uh, correct first, and then we can adjust these later. Maybe what we'll do is we'll turn this off for right now. And we're gonna drop this down to something like down maybe even smaller than this yeah it's something like that and then we'll drop this down to something like this now we can increase this one
We want these to kind of counterbalance each other a little bit. So let's make this one a little bit smaller even. Maybe I'll just uh, bring that all the way down. Yeah, we can do this. We can actually create like some of these hard edges. Maybe this is just a little bit too harsh. What do you guys think? Maybe we should just do it with the lighting system. Maybe we'll just do a little bit of a line right there. And then we can create a new light right, right in here. And uh, we'll do one down here. And then we can start to adjust some of these colors some. Oh, we know what we, we could do a lot of this stuff too with um, yeah, effects layers. We got these ones, so let's uh, let's create some little uh, little lights. Should be even smaller than that, right? Let's let's just make that zero, and this to like zero point five. And now we can go back into our next layers here. So if we switch back over, you can see. This is what it would be like uh, normally, without even, but with the effects layers. But as we begin to add in these elements, uh, the atmosphere really begins to come out. I think it really starts to feel like uh, an actual place. And maybe we can even grab in some uh, additional kind of elements and do lots of cool stuff in here.
Let's go to this one. Let's drop this down in underneath that so it gets affected by it. Yeah, very cool. And now we can turn in uh, or turn on this if we want to add in uh, some additional kind of elements here. I'm going to intensify this one a little bit. Yeah, super cool. That adds a, a whole new layer of uh, excitement to the image, I think. And maybe we'll just uh, increase these a little bit too. Awesome. And you can see how quickly you can kind of set these up and uh, really have some fun with them. Super fun. Great. All right. Well, we have a little bit of time left. Uh, is there anything that I can help you guys with? Is there anything else that uh, you guys would kind of like to see or... Uh, do you guys have any questions or anything? Oh, well, thanks, Anthony. We really appreciate that. Have you guys actually checked out uh, the, um, the reference manual builder yet? There's a lot of really great stuff that you can do uh, inside of here. If you guys haven't uh, checked this out yet, I uh, certainly uh, suggest that you do. This is a very powerful new tool that uh, uh, Dominic put a lot of work into, and I, I love it. Oh, yeah, no problem at all, Big Ben. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to be ending the stream here shortly anyway, so... Uh, thanks for hanging out.
Now, I'm not exactly sure uh, what your question is, Anthony. Um, is it copyright infringement to do older material like 2E D and D? There's a lot of 2E products uh, on the store, uh, and anything that you use in your own personal games, I don't believe that there can be any copyright. Only if you were trying to sell it or or stream it or share it in some way where it could be monetized. But inside of this, uh, one of the great things that you can do if we go into our page functionality, we have uh, lots of different options. Um, so if we were to create like a page in here, we can, we can add in any sort of elements that we want. So this would be like the header, for example. Uh, and then uh, you can just click this, and then you'll have options for different uh, frames that you can kind of place in here. do lots of interesting stuff but what we can do is we can add in all of our image elements um what i actually did with it is i made a dm screen uh, works it's super great you can add in any sort of element that you wish so for example the stuff that we were just doing here let's let's go in let's go back into uh you can just drag and drop this right in here add in uh, additional text and maybe have another image And you can add in your text uh, right into this area here. And the great thing about it is that this is all collapsible, right? And so this is uh, just like a pop. It'll, this will actually create for you um, like a little pop-out window that you can actually use to create all of your modules and what with. Super powerful tool. Lots and lots of fun stuff, and so you can actually do, uh, and you can add in all of your different elements and so on. If you haven't checked that out, I definitely would suggest you do. Uh, there's all kinds of really cool stuff that you can do that. Oh, very cool. All right, guys. Well, if there's no other questions, if you guys don't have anything else uh, that I can help you with, I'm kind of probably I'm going to call it now. Uh, but thank you guys so much for hanging out. We'll have uh, some uh, new stuff to work on uh, next time, and uh, we'll be talking about all of the great stuff that's coming out in the future. Um, so uh, hang on to um, or keep a ear out for all of the great stuff coming your way. Don't you can hang on too, I guess. Well, awesome, guys. Uh, thanks again. And uh, I always appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me on Saturday. Um, it's, I, I always look forward to it. It's, it's so much fun. And it's so great to be able to interact with you guys. And if you guys have any requests or if there's anything that I could help you with, please just let me know. I'm more than happy to do whatever I can. All right, guys. Well, thank you. And we'll talk to you all next week. Uh, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then we usually run till about five or six. Have a great week, everyone, and we'll see you.